And so in both cases, I have proved that nearby points are larger. And I've proved it because I'm just deep. I mean, basically, this whole theorem says, yo, if you're decreasing to the left and you're increasing to the right, then duh, f of c is the smallest. All right, how are we feeling about this? All right, this means that I can prove that a certain function has a relative min. All right, let's take a function um, and sort of see the power that we have suddenly unlocked. Um, by being able to analyze the derivative. All right, let's go. Uh, let the function be uh, x plus 2 sine x. All right, now, uh, yeah. You have seen this function before, uh, probably, uh, in pre-calc. Let's um, just, for the purposes of uh, reminding us, what, what are, what's some like semi-crappy but correct, but not that much fun, pre-calculus things we can do with this function? Make a graph of two closer than the algebra. Yes. You said helper functions. Do you mean auxiliary? Yeah. Yeah, the, what's it called? The, um, what's that called again? The, the envelope. Yes. Good. Uh, good. Um, so, fact, sine x is between negative one and one. Remember all this crap? Yeah, so 2 sine x is between negative 2 and 2, and therefore, x plus sine x, 2 sine x, uh, 2 sine x, is between um, x minus 2 and x plus 2. All right, this is a valuable uh, piece of logic, because it tells me that my function uh, must lie somewhere between x minus 2 and x plus 2. Alright, so that's what I refer to as the envelope. I think Giles called it that also. So, here we go. Uh, here is the line, yeah, y equals x plus 2. Here is the line y equals x minus 2. That's looking so bad. Why is that so bad? Alright, uh, and now uh, I know that my function must lie somewhere between these lines. Yeah? Okay. Uh, and then the only other thing I can really do is I can do that whole thing where I'm like, yo, whenever, whenever pi is, um, uh, whenever sine is zero, I'm going to land right on the line. So at zero, I'll be here at zero. And if I plug in like um, pi over two, where am I going to be? Pi, if I plug in pi over 2, sine of pi over 2 is 1, so I'll be 2 plus pi over 2, right? So I'm going to be like, if that's pi over 2, I'm going to land on the line. Oh, no, no, sorry. I'm going to land not on the line. I'm going to land on the, um, on the top line, on the top envelope, right? So that number is pi over 2 comma uh, 2 plus uh, pi over 2. Yeah. And then, by the time I get to pi, where am I going to be? Now back on this line, right? Because sine of pi is zero. So, okay. So, and then I vaguely know that this thing is going kind of like, uh, and then, um, yeah, and kind of like down, and then back up again. Okay, but now, with the power of differentiation, I can like know everything. Um, I'm going to make that, fix that picture a little bit. All right, so take the derivative. Uh, let's do it. What is the derivative of this function? 1 plus, one plus 2 cosine x. Uh, okay, and uh, I would now like to know when this function is positive and when it is negative. All right, this might be another thing that Giles refused to do in precoxy, even though I think it's important, uh, which is uh, trigonometric inequalities. Did he do this? A little, a little bit, yeah. In pre-calc B, he did it. But in pre-calc C, I did it like a lot, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Um, so, good. Uh, what I want to do is I now want to know when is this positive and when is this negative. All right, so I now I set up a little pre-calculus problem for myself of when is 1 plus 2 cosine x positive. 
People who had me last semester, do you remember what to do now? Yeah. Kind of like do it and you make a picture, right? Someone see what I'm doing? I'm trying to find the, uh, the, the SIGN of this derivative so I can learn about the function. All right, so 2 cosine x must be greater than negative 1, and so cosine x must be greater than negative 1 half. Yeah. Now I make a picture of the unit circle, and I shade all the areas where the cosine is less than negative a half. So greater than negative a half. Yeah. Whatever I said. Sorry. Cosine, of course, is the is the horizontal component. So shade shade the parts of the circle in which the cosine is greater than negative a half. Where is cosine negative a half, first of all? Yeah. So here and like here, right? 2 pi over 3 and 4 pi over 3. And where is cosine uh, greater than that? Like all these guys. Cool, cool? So suppose I was just looking at this function on the integral from 0 to 2 pi, because that's like a thing that we do. Well then, if this is uh, 2 pi over 3, and this is 4 pi over 3, I have now solved, with the picture as an aid, um, the uh, problem of when the derivative is positive. Specifically, the derivative is positive wherever I've shaded, and therefore it's negative everywhere else. Cool, cool? Okay, so let's make a sign chart uh, from 0 to 2 pi. Where does the sign of the derivative change? 2 pi over 3, and it also changes at 4 pi over 3. Okay, so from 0 to 2 pi over 3, the derivative is positive. From 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3, the derivative is negative. And from 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi, the derivative is positive again. All right, this gives me very powerful information. It tells me that it is precisely at 2 pi over 3 that my function went from increasing to decreasing. And therefore, I now know the relative min, uh, relative max rather, of this function is at 2 pi over 3. And I'm going to kind of like, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6. I'm going to try to draw this function on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. I also know at 4 pi over 3, which is like about 4, 2, 3, 4 and a little bit more, is where my function is going to have its relative min. And then. Uh, it's at 3 pi over 2, which is like 4 and a half, where it's going to touch this thing before eventually coming back again. I oh, almost got it. All right, so, uh, good. Um, why does that look so wrong? Yeah, it does look kind of wrong. Hold on. It's at 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 and a half. That it touches, I don't, I don't but it's at it's not a very four is where it's actually minimum. Do you guys see the difference? And not exactly four. Uh, four. Um, what did I say? Four, five, or three. Um, or All right. So um, ugh, that function was ugly. I don't care right now. Um, so now uh, I know two things about this function. I know that um, f is. Uh, increasing on the interval from 0 to 2 pi over 3. I know that f is decreasing on the interval from 2 pi over 3 to 4 pi over 3. And I know that f is again uh, increasing on the interval from 4 pi over 3 to 2 pi. Cool, cool? And most importantly, I now know that I have some relative minima and relative maxima. Where does this function have a relative max? At 2 pi over 3. Uh, yeah, at 2 pi over 3. All right, so there's a magic sentence. And the magic sentence is the sentence that you must use whenever you want to argue that a function has a relative max or relative min. Uh, and the magic sentence invokes the first derivative test. 
And so basically, what we want to say is, yo, the derivative changes sign. So okay, so here's the full sentence. Uh, f prime changes sign from positive to negative at x equals 2 pi over 3. Fact, which is supported by my sign chart, supported by my work. Since there is a sign change in the derivative, we have just proved this whole theorem that says, duh, if the derivative was positive, it's increasing, and then the derivative is negative, it's decreasing, so there must have been a relative max. So that's just what we say. So, by the first derivative test, which saves us from having to say all that all over again, conclusion, f has a relative max um, at x equals 2 pi over 3. Can you guys handle that? All right. Good. Um, how and though, does this function have a relative minimum anywhere? Um, yeah, can I get the magic sentence that justifies that there is a relative min at x equals 4, 5, or 3? Um, f prime changes sign from negative to positive at x equals 4, 5, over 3. Um, so by the... By the First derivative test. Yeah. Uh, FDT. It has a relative minimum. Yep. F has a relative minimum um, at x equals 4 pi over 3. All right, so if I ask you to justify the relative extrema, that's basically how you do it. All right, how are we feeling? All right, good. Let's do one more little thing um, because it's, it's kind of tricky. The, the calculus is not that hard, but I think the, the pre calc is a little hard. Um, if I give you some function like cosine squared x plus sine x on the interval 0 to pi, this is the last thing we'll do. Um, and I want to find out uh, where this function has relative minima or maxima. Uh, how do I do it? People who had me last semester, we did a lot of these, but maybe the other people didn't, so I want to do it now. Um, let's go. What should we do first? I want to find all the relative extrema and know where it's increasing and where it's decreasing. Take the derivative. Thank you. So everyone do that. squared is negative 2 sine. cosine to the 1 back inside negative sine, yeah? Plus cosine. Okay, so unfortunately this derivative is like kind of a drag, right? And whereas the calculus took me only like a second, now the pre-calculus is a little bit uh, advanced. So the smart thing to do now is to factor this. So if I factor out a cosine, then I get basically uh, 1 minus 2 sine x, yeah? All right, so that's my derivative, but now I need to go through the process of figuring out precisely when that derivative is positive and when that derivative is negative. What's up? Would it be like useful to do an inverse um, trigger? Okay. I would rather not do that. No, I think, I think you're maybe thinking of the wrong identity. How did we do this last semester, people? You guys remember? Okay, if not, uh, so I want to know when this is positive. Well, when will the product of two things be positive? When they're both, when positive. They're both positive or both negative. So I need to know precisely when cosine is positive and negative, and I need to know precisely when 1 minus 2 sine x is positive and negative. All right, so I spent like the whole block last semester reviewing this. I'm going to set up two circles, one when cosine is positive, and a separate sort of equation whenever 1 minus 2 sine x is positive. Positive is just my default convention. Okay, remember this coming back to you now, guys? 
So when is cosine positive? Got to go fast before the bell rings. The right half. The right half, thank you. So all this. Okay, when is 1 minus 2 sine x positive? All right, well now I'll just like do some math or whatever. So it's happening whenever sine x is less than a half, agree? Okay, so now I make a circle. When is sine x less than a half? All that. Agree? Okay, and now the brilliant method which I taught uh, my students last semester is I want to like simultaneously consider both. So you like recombine them onto a single circle with like overlapping crap, right? So you kind of do like uh, this and also uh, this with like sort of concentric circles to keep yourself organized. And as by convention you've shaded uh, when, when the thing is positive, if it's double shaded then they're both positive, so the product is positive, right? Yeah. If you've, if you've neither shaded, then that means they're both negative, so the product is positive, and et cetera, et cetera. All right, so on the interval from zero to pi, when do I get a sign change? Pi over 6, I get a sign change. Pi over 2, I get a sign change. Right? And 5 pi over 6, I get a sign change. Well, I'm stopping at pi just because I feel like it. Okay, so from 0 to pi over 6, is my derivative positive or negative? Positive. Positive, because they're both positive, so that means the product is positive. Yeah, yeah? From pi over 6 to pi over 2? One is shaded and one isn't. That means one of the guys was positive and one of them was negative, so the product was negative. This is just a pre-calc technique to solve, quadri to solve uh, trigonometric inequalities. From pi over 2 to 5, pi over 6? Both were, neither were shaded, so both were negative, so the product is positive. And now, again, pos uh, negative. Okay, so that tells me that my function is increasing on the interval 0, pi over 6, decreasing on pi over 6 to pi over 2, increasing, and then decreasing. And that's the kind of information I want. Oh, so where does this function have a relative minimum? Pi over 6. Sorry, uh, uh, sorry pi over 2. Yup. So, so relative min at x equals pi over 2. Uh, relative max uh, at x equals pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. Yeah. Woo hoo! All right. Good. Um, that's all I got. Say goodbye to period 3. Goodbye period 3. Adios. Hope you had fun while it's period 3. All right. Boom.